Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This week we are talking ornaments again. I'm going to show you a really, really simple ornament, but I wanted to make sure I showed you early enough so that you can go out to the store and buy the supplies. Once Christmas is gone, it's going to be a little bit harder to purchase these ornaments. This is just a plastic ornament. I picked them up from Michaels a few years ago from their celebrated line. They were only 99 cents and I'm pretty sure I got them 75% off. It was one of those things when I went to the after Christmas sale and they didn't have anything I wanted and I wasn't gonna leave without purchasing something that was on clearance. So I grabbed three of these little ornament balls. Now there's a variety of things you can do with these. You can get very, very creative. You can go as simple as they have, I found this ornament ball marker that was a really big hit at the Dollar Tree. I picked it up last year. I haven't used it yet, as you can see. And these I just pulled out of my stash. But I've heard that these work really good. They're supposed to work on glass or plastic. And that you can write on your ornaments and decorate them. I'm going to guess that you could probably use a Sharpie also. It'd be a fun project just to give the kids the ball and let them let them write their name on it or draw a snowman or Santa or those. They have about the fingerprint reindeer I think I see a lot. And that would just be really fun for the kids. And, it, you know, since they're not going to really break them, I'm not going to say that they're shatter resistant or anything. Because they are just plastic. I do not see anywhere on there that it says anything special about that. But most of the times when the little kids, if they just drop these on the table, maybe put a towel down for them. So, of course, they don't get marker on your table either. So that's just a quick little thing that the kids can do. Now let's see what we can do. I don't have any exact examples, but the knitters, they like to knit a little piece of, uh, like a sample of the yarn, and then they pop it onto toothpicks with little wooden beads on the end, and then you can put them in here because the toothpicks will kind of go from side to side, and it lets it just sit in there and kind of spin around. Or you can also hang it from some fishing line or some invisible thread through the top. So the knitters and crocheters are putting little samples in there. Well, I thought, well, we're quilters. I just decided on this this ornament this week, this morning. So I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have an actual little piece of quilt. But you can make a tiny little quilt and put it in there. Or what I would like to do is you just pop the top off. Just like any of the other ornaments from the olden days, they have these wires that go in there. I have some of my batiks. I save every little bit of batik scrap that I have. So you can cut some smaller pieces or some larger pieces and you can just pop them in there whatever color you want. I've seen it also where they take the, you could tear up tissue paper or you could crinkle up some paper, kind of fold it over and over again like a fan so that it can go in there and it'll be all crinkly like. Now you can just put this in all by itself. You can mix colors. You can take little bits from one of your projects throughout the year to put in there and then you can write 2018 on it so you have a memory of what projects you worked on if you just take just a little snippet of every project you do it can go in there and then you just pop this top back on just kind of put one in push that wire down a little and the top just snaps right back on and now you have a cute little colorful ornament you can also use this as a bed and put uh, a little toy in there or something that's going to be meaningful to your family from the year. And then when you put the year on it, you can also just put it on the bottom so it's not like blocking the view of anything. You could, this is not very smooth up here, so it would be hard to put it on the top. You can make a little hang tag, one of those little cardboard tags. The, uh, they have the little punches for the paper that you can just hang, or you can just write it on a piece of paper and hang it from there. So now what the cross stitchers are doing is throughout the year they have something called an ort jar and they take their ort is O-R-T, old ratty threads, and they just cut them off and save them in some type of a jar. I've been putting mine in here. This is my cat's one of their favorite treats and I've just been saving them throughout the year. This is only embroidery floss type projects. A lot of the embroidery projects you've seen me do with the heart and the unicorn and stuff, any little snippet goes in here. So then you could take little pieces of that and do the same thing in your ball like a quilter would do, but then you're a cross stitcher and do that. But if you don't cross stitch and you're not a quilter, you can still do it with your knitting yarn. So these are some of the old pieces from my knitting projects. Now I've been saving these for other reasons. I'd like to do that project where you, you lay it out on that uh, 
the wash away fusible stuff and then you stitch all over it and then when you wash it away you just have your yarn or your thread there and you can also do it on art quilts so I've been saving my sewing thread now my year hasn't been very colorful because I've been using a lot of neutrals so depending I haven't done a lot of actual quilting so mine aren't all that colorful but you can put little snippets of thread and if you haven't been saving this Sometimes you can go to thrift stores and you find those old spools of thread. Now the thread's no good, but you could snip it and put it in here. Then I was thinking another thing you can do is if you have the little pom-poms, you can pop them in there. Then after you have a, a just a decent amount, you can have a snowball fight. So you could put let it snow or a snowball fight or anything like that. And if you don't have the pom-poms, you can do the same thing with cotton balls. Maybe if you want to cut them down a little smaller or just they're really, really squishy. Then I also thought that if you kind of fluffed this out a little or took some cotton batting and put that down in the bottom of it, then you lay a little bit of a mini quilt on top then it'd be like having your small quilt on top of a bed of snow. And that was a fun idea. So generally, anything that can fit through this hole, you can go ahead and put in there. Now you obviously aren't gonna be able to get your finger in there to get anything out, but if you have some tweezers or some hemostats, if something goes in there that you don't want, or you wanna, maybe you wanna put a little dab of glue on it and place it in just exactly where you want it, you can go ahead and use some hemostats for that. So nothing is a permanent thing until it's permanent. So if you're not gonna glue it or anything, you can easily pop it all out. Same thing with my batik fabric here. If I decide that I saw a piece in there that got stuck that I didn't like because I was making a green and red and a piece of orange got popped in there, I just go ahead and pull everything out because it's really hard to shake it out like this because most of the time we're pushing it in. Once again, here's a look of the pen, the ornament marker. I still see them at my Dollar Tree. I was up there last week and they still have them. Oh, which, speaking of the Dollar Tree, they have little packets of, of different type of glitter and sequins that are meant to go right into these balls. So you can go ahead and pop that in there and then you have that little shaker ball with all your different glitter and stuff. So if you just take pick these up, I've seen them at the Dollar Tree. I was at Joanne's last night and they had a big box of them with all different size balls in it. And everything there right now at Christmas is 50 or 60% off. That's one of the good things about being a crafter because everything tends to go on sale really deeply even before the holiday gets there. So if you come across one of these ideas, you still have time to go to the store and buy it. You could take your Sharpie and put your family member's name on it if you can't find one of these pens. There's all kinds of creative things you can do on here. I bet you if you look on Pinterest, there'll be even more. There, there's unlimited number of things that you can do with these little balls. So that's our ornament project for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As I said, I went to Joann's yesterday and I did pick up some new Christmas fabric for myself. I went and just got a quarter yard of everything. With it all being on deep sale right now, a quarter yard of something that's 50% off is really very inexpensive and you can get a large variety. I just got quarter yard cuts because they're, they're what, they're nine inches by 40 to 44, 46 inches, depending on the fabric. You can make a lot of ornaments out of this. You can make stockings. You can even just use these with some, maybe some white fabric or a different type of green or red or something. And you can make a quilt with it. So it's a great way to grab a little bit of all of the holiday fabric because a lot of them there were $12.99 a yard or $9.99 a yard. And if you're gonna be getting half yard or yard cuts of everything, that, that price is gonna add up really quick, especially this time of year when you're spending most of your money, you want it to go towards your special Christmas dinner or gifts for friends and family and you're mailing out cards and everything just adds up. But if you don't wanna miss out on these sales and still get some of your Christmas fabric, go ahead and get quarter yard cuts once it goes down to 50% off. If you get some of the smaller prints and not the large, large ones, you'll be able to use it for a variety of things. My daughter and I, I let her pick out all the fabric. We found some really fun ones. This one is like one of those sweaters. I really enjoyed the ones with the black background with the bright colors on it. Those are really nice. So as it was suggested, I'm going to start making some kits. Whoops. 
to sell in my art fire shop. So if you want to make some of the projects, now I'm not really planning at the moment of making any kits for these, because if I give you a kit, then I've actually just made the ornament for you. And I'd like you to be able to find things in your house to in your craft room and write on it and put little special things that are special to you because anyone can pick up some white snowballs and put it in there. You guys really don't need me to make a kit for that. But anything that's going to be using fabric, we're going to go ahead and I'll make up kits from these. I'm going to start making up a few for the folded hexagon from last week's. So that's it for me this week. I go, hope you guys have some fun trying to figure out different creative ways to use your, your little plastic see-through ornaments here. Oh, do you remember way back, back, back in the day they used to put paint in them and you'd swirl it around and then put it upside down in a cup and then you'd have paint? They were doing those with the glass ornaments. I'm not sure if the paint will stick to the plastic, but that's another idea. There's just so many things you can do. Until next week's ornament, you have a great week. Bye.